Amen. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all got to get excited today. You've got, I'm not going to let you be quiet today. We've got some mighty good men and fathers in this house. And we're not going to be quiet about it. We're going to lift up our voice and thank the Lord for it. Come on, musicians. Somebody bless the Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. Man, oh, man. Listen, I want to thank everybody, but I want to just take a moment to say these things very quickly. Every year I express myself in, uh, in my preaching. You hear me speak of my father and my grandfather, my parents, and the Bible says honor your father and mother. He doesn't say to do it one day. He tells us to just honor them, which means we have to honor them every single day. Right. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. And so today I want to, uh, Kamari, what's, Kamari, come here quick. Help me out. Take these so they don't have to get up. I want to just honor uh, some very special men. You know, uh, one of the most grave errors that we have committed within the church and without is that we think that we have arrived where we are without somebody helping us to get there. Amen. And oh, come on, somebody. Well, whatever you've done, God has put somebody in your life who has sown, who has cried, who has prayed, who has invested. I don't care who you are. There is no such thing as a self-made anything. Oh, come on, somebody, and say amen. Somebody played a part in who you are. And so today I'm asking today that I want to start the ball rolling with a man of legacy. I thank God that I'm able to be at my age and still have both my grandparents here with me today. And it is a blessing to have. And I say it all the time, not to be cliche. I say it because I believe it. I say it because it's the truth. I'm going to tell you right now, I am blessed and honored to have the world's greatest Grandfather, and I want to ask Kamari to come. Amen. And I just want to bless him. Come on, just give that to Papa. I love you. Come on, y'all. That's my grandfather. Amen. Sometimes people hear how I preach, and you assume that everything that I get in my preaching is just comes from Bible schooling and education. However, a lot of what I receive as it pertains to being a man or being a person of integrity, being a person of character. Uh, saying yes sir and no sir. These are the things that I watch my grandfather who's 80 years old plus. Still today he addressed men as sir and ma'am and that type of respect and that type of integrity goes a long way. Amen. So without going too much further, I've got to tell you today that I have to save the best for last because in my life I, could, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I have a father, a real father today. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, y'all talk bad about men. Especially black men, you talk bad about them. Well, I've got a father who was a real father. I, I, I've said it before, and I always say I'm not going to say a lot because there is a word in the house. But I have to give honor where it is due because I've never woken, I've never taken the time to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom and walk past mama and daddy's room. And daddy wasn't in there if he wasn't at work. I never saw that. Are y'all listening? I don't have a father that just decided to go off and, uh, and abuse me or beat me to death. Are y'all listening or curse me out and call me names or even get drunk in front of me and talk and beat on my mother? I haven't. I don't know what that feels like. I don't have that. I'm not tearing anybody down. But today I've got to give honor to my father because honor is due today. And I'm asking that my son will come and thank the Lord today for the world's greatest father. I love you, dad. Love your grandfather. Amen. Amen. I come from greatness. I come from greatness. Amen. Amen. Every one of my uh, parents and grandparents, even those that are deceased in their memory, I'm grateful to have strong men. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, people didn't even know God, but God had put things in them. And, uh, uh, my mother's father, who I'm telling you now, who was a man that stood starch and stood firm. And they tell me all the time that I have a lot of his ways. And so I'm so grateful. And then a grandmother who raised 17 children. Amen. So I am blessed. And let me tell you something. You're blessed too. Somebody sowed a seed in your life. Come on, somebody. Somebody planted some stuff in your life. And I don't know how y'all can be so cool, calm, and collected. But after you think about over the years, when you should have lost everything that you had. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody other than Minister Cole. Somebody ought to just take a minute and let me jog your memory. 
and you ought to just look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. If it had not been for the Lord. Oh, where would my family have been? Where would our houses have been? Where, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing today. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. God is the greatest. Amen. Listen, it's a great thing. I want to just take a moment, if we can, to thank every person that donated and made it possible to spend money. Did y'all hear what I just said? Amen. Some people spent money. Moolah, cash, Fetty, chips. Yeah. They spent money. And sometimes we act like it ain't much because it's not our money. But I'm grateful when anyone would take their time. I've been in million dollar churches. I've been in mega ministry. And I've seen them collect thousands upon thousands and never give people a bookmark. And yet we sit right here in this converted warehouse. Heart, are y'all hearing me? But we got enough heart in this house that we don't let a day go by that we don't bless our fathers and our mothers. And y'all can sit there, but I ain't gonna let you do it. You ought to say thank you, Lord, for a church like that. And then it gets better and better every year. This year they just didn't buy gifts. We got gifts to give. We got extra gifts. But then somebody went and talked, and oh my God, amen. They baking cakes. Not one, two, three, four, five. And let me tell you, I know, I can't always say, maybe I'll get in trouble. Oh, she can go to amen. Thank the Lord today. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that a blessing, y'all? That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of something like that. Hey, man, you know, you set yourself up to be blessed when you honor your elders. You set yourself up to get ahead when you're blessing your older folk. You're setting the way for yourself when you rise up and call your mama blessed. Uh, I thank God today for surrogate fathers and deacon fathers and preacher fathers and musician fathers and brother fathers. Amen. Thank God today. Amen. I, I tell anybody, amen, it's not an easy thing being a father or a mother. Amen. It is a job. Come on, y'all. Y'all are quiet. I don't need help today. We're going to get through this, amen? I know it's late, but if y'all just say, look at somebody and tell them I'm ready. I, I'm going to surprise you and let you get out of here, but just look at somebody else say, there's a word in the house. Hallelujah! Listen, listen, listen. I'm so glad today because uh, it, it looks as though I have my blessed mother with me today, amen. Amen, we've been praying uh, amen. I just want to recognize, Mother, I'm talking about you. You been, you made it out of the hospital. Come on, stand up if you, can, if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. I'll come over to you. Oh, look at God. Y'all don't know her story. This is our, our family today. Bless you, Mother. Bless you. Amen. Watch Amen. Amen. Y'all can do better than that. I, I talked to her in the hospital. She was laid in the hospital and didn't know what was going to happen, but the Lord brought her out. She said, when I come out, I'm coming back, back to that church. And I like it because she kept her word. Amen. Amen. She in the right place. Amen. We do thank God for her family who are part of our family. Amen. Her blessed daughter. Come on, thank the Lord for her daughter today. Amen. 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 We're blessed, y'all. We're blessed, 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 blessed. Bless coming in, bless going out. I wish somebody would have church with me today, amen? I'm not going to be long. I'm going to shorten the version, amen? But Deacon, do we have questions? Just one. Just one. Just one. We're going to answer the questions, and then we're going to speak to our fathers. Everybody say, Father. Father. Amen. Deacon, give me that one question, and then we'll get to our fathers. Amen. Amen. Uh, why is it preachers like you who stand and preach God's word don't seem to have what other churches and preachers have. An example, the prosperity, the prosperity preachers. It seems so unfair, and I believe the word church deserves the best. Amen. Somebody say amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I don't know what we deserve, but I know who we serve. 
Somebody say amen. amen. I would be a liar if I stood up here and told you that I never think about the same thing. I would be, amen. I would be a liar if I stood up and say I never worry about it, I never think about it. That wouldn't be honest. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, there are some days that I wake up and I say, why won't our people see the value and the worth? And why hasn't certain things come to pass by way of blessings and new building, new vans, new everything? Why aren't the people committed as they are many times in, well, as you say, in the prosperity ministries? Um, and when I get those thoughts, I found out that I'm not alone. Not only do you feel that way, though uh, the one or whichever one of you that wrote this letter, but I found out that the prophets who lived before I came along, that the people and the saints of God in the days of the Bible also saw success and prosperity of false preachers. They saw churches that were building real big buildings and everybody went to that church. You know, in Richmond, Richmond is a fad-driven market. Yeah. And don't worry, the church is a market. Don't y'all get it twisted, amen? Everybody goes to the most happening new church. That's right. And I won't call no names, but there's two or three of them that come up every 10 years. Yeah. Amen? Right. Uh, there was a time, I, I, I can say about some of the old, there was a time when everybody ran from the Baptist church. And they wanted to experience this new intellectual style of teaching. So they left the traditional setup and ran to the Richmond Christian Center. Now the Richmond Christian Center is a thing of the past. Amen. 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 That's right. How many, how many of y'all know time will prove some things? That's right. Everybody left the Richmond Christian Center for whatever reason or reasons thereof, and they all jumped up and joined the next wave. Amen. That wave got old, yes, and they're on to the next two or three things. Yep. Amen. Amen. I know that they're swelling, but are they growing? Now, I told you there are times when I get almost, listen to me good, when I'm almost presented with a spirit of envy. You said, Pastor, you do that? Yes, because I know what we offer. I know what we preach. I know how we love people. I know how we give to people. I can stand, let me tell you something about me, and I'm not looking for anybody to toot my horn. I, I tell you my mistakes all the time. But I sleep really good at night knowing that I told y'all the truth. Amen. I don't miss no sleep because of what I'm preaching to you all. And that means a lot because I know that I haven't robbed and I haven't raped and I haven't manipulated and I, I have not taken advantage of God's people. Amen. Oh, that feels good. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23. What the Bible says? In verse 2. Huh? And put a knife. And put a knife. To thy throat. What? Huh? And thou be a man, give it to appetite. Huh? Ho, ho, ho. Listen to me good. I know that I'm a man that's not controlled by money. The appetite of my flesh being that I would give up the people to serve my own agenda. Oh, y'all listening today. Be not. Be not. Desires of his dainty. Huh. He, the Bible says, see, every now and then the flesh rise up in me and have me feeling, you know, why can't we do it this way? And then the Bible reminded me, don't be desirous. Don't desire their dainties. For they are deceitful meat. For the, oh my God, did you hear that? Amen. The things that you see when you see the smoke coming out of the stage. Amen. That's what the new churches have. Yep. And the praise dancers come out kicking in the air like ninjas. Yeah. And then now they have church in the dark. Y'all seen that? Yep. Church is in the dark now. That's yep. the new thing. Yeah, you don't see y'all been around the truth too long. They've been in the dark. They've been in the dark. That's, right. That's the truth about it. Yes, sir, Deacon. Yes, sir. Amen. But now they cut the lights off to manifest what's going on in the inside. So they cut the lights off and they have the spotlights yeah. to prove to you that it's nothing but a show. That's right. And I ain't gonna lie to you, every now and then I, I, I my flesh. Wonder what it would be like. Right. Not that I would want to compromise, but I would want to present this truth on the same scale or the yes, same sir. platform. Yes, Are y'all listening? Amen. David came along, and David, you said, Pastor, you sure the preachers used to do that in the Bible? Oh, yes. David came along in Psalm 73, 
And he said something strange. He said he got so upset looking at the false preachers. Yeah. David was a man after God's own heart. Amen. David said he thought about giving up. But as for me. What did you say, David? My feet were almost gone. My, I almost lost my, I couldn't even stand up straight. My steps had well not slipped. Huh? I almost slipped up. For I was envious at the foolish huh? when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Huh? You became envious, David, when you yes. saw what? At the foolish. At the foolish. Mm -hmm. Huh? When I saw the prosperity. When I saw, now, your problem, those that's watching me on Facebook, listening to me on the radio, is you equate, you equate financial welfare Amen. with God's spirit and his presence. In other words, you suppose that gain it's godliness. Yep. Huh? That's right. My God, I want you to hear this good. 95 to 99% of these churches that's pulling in all this money, they are financed by the devil. That's right. Come on. Amen. Yes, that's right. You say, you telling me the devil blessed them? Oh, yes. Who do you think took Jesus to the top of the mountain mm. and offered Jesus the kingdoms Jesus. of this world? That's right. Huh? You preachers that's watching me, you get offered the kingdoms all the time. And so am I. Amen. But it's no deal. No deal. Huh? No deal. No deal. No deal. Rather read a little bit more. My feet almost slipped. Amen. Amen. When I saw, huh? Amen. The prosperity of the, watch this, wicked. of the wicked. Amen. Those fools. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. Keep going. For there are no bands in their depth, but their strength is firm. Uh-huh. Look like... There's nothing to them, but it looked like they got something. They are not in trouble as other men. Huh. They're not going through the trouble I went through. Amen. I want to know, Lord, why you took me through that trial two years ago and you let them that's running around living like the devil. Yeah. Free. You let them walk free. Yeah. Neither. Neither. Are they plagued like other men? Huh? Neither do they go through. You ever looked at people and said, why it look like the worst folk? Look like that they have the best time. Anybody ever felt like that? Well, you're not alone. What verse is that, Deacon? Uh, starting verse 6. Uh -huh. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Yes, yeah, so they become prideful and they think that that means they're blessed. Violence. Violence. Cover them as a garment. Yes. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Uh -huh. They have more than heart could wish. But they got more than they could wish for. They are corrupt. But they are corrupt. And speak wickedly concerning oppression. Ho! Oh. And they come from an oppressor's view. Amen. And speak wickedness. Stop right there because I'll get to preaching on that. Amen? Yeah. Now, a lot of y'all didn't know that was in the book. That's right there. But as you can see, this is how they operate in corruption, but they're blessed by the devil. That's right. Huh? That's right. And they trick people into thinking. Now, now let me just ask y'all a word, church. Let me encourage you. After I encourage myself as a pastor, let me encourage you to get frustrated. Amen. You that serve as leaders, get back up and get back on your post, and let's get this thing done. Amen. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Here's my question. Prosperity church, over here. Word church, over here. Listen, let's deal with it, and then we'll move on. What would you say, and I want to get some feedback. What would you say is the primary concern of this church? Those who are members and have been a part of this church, what would you say are our focal points? If you had to just pick one word or two words, what are the focal points of this ministry. Truth, honesty, deliverance. Oh, I stay right there. Don't, we don't have, I love that. I love that. The focal points of this ministry, according to you, are deliverance, truth. Oh, that's beautiful. I felt like we done something good, didn't you? Amen. Now, for those who go to the prosperity ministries, what do you hear Sunday after Sunday, week after week, what is their vocal or focal point, rather? Money, financial gain, debt free. So let's break it down. According to what you say, we're in the, deliver we're in the deliverance business. They are in the money business. They spend their time talking about money, and they get money. 
Let me ask you some word, church. We spend our time pushing deliverance, preaching truth. Now, I got to ask you honestly, do we get truth? Yes, sir. And do we get deliverance? Yes, sir. So you know what I found out? Maybe everybody's getting what they're going after. Amen. But let me help you preachers out that say, that's fine with me. You prosperity, money-hungry, grubbing, corrupt, lying, false prophet, Jim Jones liars. After we establish that your business is money and our business is truth, Amen. now let's see where Jesus fit in. It's right. Everybody say right. right. It's right to put Jesus in deliverance business. Amen. Huh? Amen. Now show me where you're right to put Jesus uh. in your money making business. Ooh. See, I got you right there. There you go. Here's what we're going to do, Word Church. We're going to honor the Lord with what we have. Amen. We're going to give and let the Lord bless us. Amen. We're going to grow together. Amen. Amen. We're going to let the mushrooms blow up fast and then kick over. Yeah. Amen. I had a few of them coming in here. One of the two ladies, she's not here today. I, I, don't, I don't care. She come in and she talking. She want to give me these pointers. Because she done been over to this church to something spirit or something. Mm -hmm. And she want to tell me how they got these growing programs mm -hmm. and what I can do to help our church have church growth. I say, lady, have you heard what I preach? Amen. If you hadn't heard what, listen to me. Yeah. Listen to me. If you heard what I preach, then you understand that only people God sent here. That's right. That's right. Can stay here. Amen. Second Corinthians. Huh? Chapter 11. What the Bible say? Verse 4. Listen. For if he that come of preach of another Jesus. Uh, uh oh. Whom we have not preached. That's it. That's not the right one. Huh? Amen. When you come here, you got the right one now, baby. The right one. Huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Give me some more, Deacon. Whom we have not preached. Listen. Or if ye receive another spirit. Or another spirit. Which ye have not received. Yes. Or another, uh -huh. or another what? Spirit. You see, that sister didn't know yeah. that she was telling me about her church. Yeah. But her church is another spirit. Yeah, that's whatever spirit it is. Huh? Yeah. It's a spirit that tell people if you serve God for money. Uh huh? Huh? But we tell people, you better not serve God for money. Because if you serve God for money, you'll serve the devil for more money. Ah, the highest bidder. The highest bidder. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're not auctioned off as whores here. That's right. Amen. And I'm no prostitute. That's right. It don't matter how much you got. I'm not for sale. That's right. Sin is still sin. That's right. Right is still right. And when I die and go to my grave, I want to be known and remembered that it was the God in him that told people the truth and nothing but the truth. Somebody say amen. amen. That's it. Every now and then we get weary, but pray. Because the Bible said, fret not. Huh? Yourself because of in due time. In due time. They'll be cut down like the grass. Amen. I let them go that blood pressure high because they got to keep lying to pay that six, seven thousand dollar mortgage. Yeah. Got to keep gas in the jet. My God, I work with the unleaded. Yeah. Huh? 87. 89. Wah wah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just keep taking them gift cards and whatever I can muzzle together. And long as the Lord put gas in the car, we'll be rolling, rolling, rolling. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes! All right, we're going to be quick, y'all. It's 2 o'clock. Listen, everybody say fathers. Father. Come on, we're going to be quick. I got to shorten my message, but it's Father's Day. Thank the Lord again for fathers. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I, I share many times kind of the same word over and over because the word don't change, and we've got new fathers in the house today. I think that it is very important that we deal with fathers and because I'm short on time I'm going to try to cut back on as much as I can because I want you to leave away from here being a better father. Amen. 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 Y'all need y'all help today. Amen. Amen. 
I promise you, I'm going to shock a lot of you. I, I, I found out that there seems to be an attack. We shared at the Rainbow Tea that there's an attack against the nuclear family. Right. Amen. Everybody know what nuclear family is? Amen. Nuclear family consists of a father, a mother. Come on, somebody. And the children. Amen. Amen. I found out that there's a shortage, that it has become an abnormal thing. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking down to nobody because even I've had to experience the rigors, come on somebody, of separation and all kind of things that can happen to a family. But I'm not telling you to watch and observe what has happened to me or nobody else. What I'm telling you is God ordained a nuclear family. What I'm telling you is that God ordained a father and a mother. Amen. He did not ordain two men. He did not ordain right. two women. Right. He did not ordain in between. In oh, come on, somebody. Amen. The dog and the cat. Right. He called men. Everybody yeah. said men. Yeah. Maybe before we deal with being a father, we got to deal with just being a man. Right. Oh, any men in the house today? Right. There you go. If y'all hang in there with me, y'all going to not like me, but then you'll like me before we go. Amen. 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 We preach to the women. Now we got to talk to the men. I, I found out, give me Isaiah because I got to move fast now. I found out that there has become an, it has become an abnormal thing to see a man uh, in the place with his family. Amen. Y'all say amen. amen. I found out that when you see somebody with a dad, that a dad is a lost art. Y'all not hearing me. A father is a lost art. And that most men, uh, well, a lot of men, I won't say most, a lot of men are missing in action. <laughs> I, I'm here to tell you that it's because before you can dare understand how to be a father, you got to understand what it is to be a man. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. If not, I'll go and talk to the ladies. Amen. Amen. Sisters, y'all, anybody just, you, sisters, do y'all appreciate a good man? All right. Amen. Amen. You know, I get pulled on easy. Amen. And so I want to just tell you this. It is no coincidence that God warned us about the breakup of the nuclear family. And why there's a breakup is because order has become out of order. We know that in the beginning, God called the man. Amen. Amen. He called the man to the forefront, gave them the responsibility, gave the man the authority, gave the man the awesome, come on, ordination to name everything that is. Out of that.